Good evening, Bobcat families, and welcome to this evening's event. This evening, we're going to be discussing the return to school. All of us are very excited here at Bel Air High School. Teachers, staff, all the staff, custodians, secretaries, everybody's excited to have our students coming back. This evening, I'll be discussing a lot of information with you regarding not only coming back to school, but also some changes in the virtual uh, piece of the education system for the rest of the year. For those of you I've not had the pleasure of meeting, and you're just used to my voice, obviously, through all the calls, my name is Greg Commander. I'm the principal here at Ballard High School. I'm finishing off my 29th year of education in Hartford County Public Schools, and my last 11 have been here uh, at Bel Air High School. Uh, both of my children are graduates of the Hartford County Public School System. My son's currently a junior this year at McDaniel and unfortunately is in the middle of quarantine right now. So we're living that uh, situation right now. And my daughter is a graduate of University of South Carolina and is working at Georgetown University. So I've been involved, as I said, for 29 years with Harf County Public Schools. Some of you I've had the pleasure of meeting before with younger uh, children, uh, or excuse me, older children who have come through uh, Ballard High School, and I look forward to working with all of you. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Al Johnson, who is one of my assistant principals. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, for those of you that don't know, this is my fifth year at Beller High School and my 24th year uh, in Harford County. So I want to talk to you a little bit about roles. Uh, first, my roles in life. I'm a, I'm a husband of 21 years. I'm also the father of two. I have one in college, one in high school. And so I'm experiencing virtual learning, um, both as an educator and as a parent. And the, the one thing that, it's, that it has taught me um, is that the only way to do this well, whether it be as a parent, a student, an educator, the only way to do this well is if we do this together. That's that's the one thing I've learned, um, and that's why we're here tonight. Because we need you, you need us, um, and your students need all of us. And so we thought we'd bring you together just to go over a few things, and so that you're aware, so give you some information as we move forward. Um, one of my roles at uh, Beller High School is the test coordinator, um, and so we had some good news last week. For those of you that are wondering, uh, the state finally. We were going to test, but then the state last week changed their mind uh, and said that we're not going to do state testing. And we think that's an advantage for our students uh, as we move forward. We didn't think that was um, going to be a good idea for them because of navigating virtual learning. So next year uh, we'll make up for that, but those details will come out later. Um, we also have SATs coming up in April uh, and AP testing coming up in May. And those two tests, uh, Mr. Noss, our school counselor, has been putting forward some information. Some of you have already received that information. Uh, but if you have questions on SATs or AP testing, please contact him. Some of the other roles I have uh, as an administrator, I'm the ninth grade administrator. Um, I'm in charge of facilities, scheduling, and also substitutes, among many other things. So if you have questions about those, please feel free to contact me. Um, we also have another AP. Uh, in charge of many different things, and that's going to be Miss Miss Natrice quickly. Good evening, Bobcat family. It truly is a pleasure and a privilege to be with you all tonight. I am really excited about the days of head, the days that are ahead. Just a little bit about me. I was born and raised in Harford County. I graduated from Haverty Grace High School. Um, I have been married for 23 years and I have three beautiful children. Um, my son is more popular than myself and I have a beautiful 12 year old who is finally getting some success in this virtual world. I'm really grateful to have a stepdaughter who is just um, an inspiration to us all. Some of my wonderful um, jobs at uh, Bel Air High School. I have the privilege of working very closely with our English department and our special ed department. Um, I am also going to uh, be working with our 10th graders and 11th graders this year. Um, if you have any questions about transportation, please send me an email. And if you are coming back, um, 
and you need a tablet, please contact me uh, before Monday and we will take care of making certain that you get the tablet that you need. Um, I have a quote that I want to share with you. Um, my son, um, who was drafted to the um, New York Knicks, uh, kind of had a rough, rough week. And the quote that I sent him was, courage doesn't always roar. Sometimes it's the little whispers that say, we'll try again tomorrow. And that's what we're going to do. We are going to keep trying and we're going to do this together. I would like to introduce um, another administrator who will be working with you all and with your students is Mr. Jason Redman. Good evening, everybody. This is my first year here at Bel Air High School, and I'm joining the team after 18 years uh, in Harford County Public Schools. I moved here 18 years ago from the Metro Detroit area where my family still resides, uh, and I've worked uh, at Edgewood Middle School for nine years, Falston High School for two years, and I've spent the last five years as the assistant principal at Southampton Middle School. Uh, my role this year is kind of unique. I'm actually split between uh, two buildings. I serve here at Bel Air High School along with uh, Bel Air Middle School. I work with the sixth grade uh, at Bel Air Middle School, and here at Bel Air High School, uh, I am uh, the 12th grade administrator. I work with the senior class. So my list of responsibilities encompasses all things uh, senior related. So right now I'm, I'm super busy with parking permit requests, uh, working with cap and gown orders, which are on their way and going to be delivered quite soon, uh, and serving on the graduation workforce committee for the district uh, to get ready for that final event for this year. Uh, one of my other roles here at Bel Air High School uh, is working on your student cohort assignments. Uh, so if you're going to be changing your student cohort uh, from uh, either currently your student is working virtually and they'd like to come back uh, and work in person or vice versa. Uh, they work in person uh, and they, they want to switch to virtual. I'm the person that you need to contact and I'll take care of that switch uh, for you. Uh, one of my other responsibilities also revolves around uh, our student planner. Uh, for many years, that student planner has been a, a physical item that your student would carry around, which uh, encompasses all of our classroom expectations, district rules, and a calendar. Uh, we've made a shift uh, to, to move that student planner uh, to a digital version. And your student has access to that in their It's Learning page. Uh, on their It's Learning page, they have a tile, which is entitled BAHS Student Planner. Uh, it looks just like all the rest of their classes, and they're currently enrolled uh, in there so they can access all of those uh, rules, expectations, uh, calendar, all of the items that were in that physical planner and in the digital setting. So it's one thing that they can review before they come back. I'm super excited uh, for students to return on March 15th. I've only ever worked in the building uh, where it's been practically empty. Uh, so I'm really excited to see what it's like full of life. Uh, our staff started to come back in uh, today to start setting up their classrooms and just the boost of energy from having more people in the building is really exciting. And I'm really looking forward uh, to, to what it's gonna be like uh, filled with kids uh, very, very soon. So I'm gonna throw it back to Mr. Commander and he's gonna talk uh, a little bit more about some specifics related to our opening on March 15th. I want to thank all of my assistant principals for all their hard work uh, that they have been doing throughout the, the year, especially through the summer. You know, we got geared up to do uh, an opening and then, you know, we, we had to wait because of the numbers going up and we had to put another plan in. Uh, I, I just can't say thank you enough to all of them for what they've been doing. And I do want to thank all the parents uh, and the students. We know, as we've been saying, we know. A lot of us are facing challenges with our own families and members of our families and our own children. So thank you. Thank you for giving us the time and effort for believing in us. And um, if there's one thing you need to know about me, uh, we're not perfect and we don't claim to be perfect, but, but we will continue to work hard to do what we need to do for all of your children. Um, to say thank you to our staff of teachers is not even enough. Um, they're working above and beyond the, the day. Um, I know some of them are putting in 12, 13, 14, 16 hour days. Um, I, I try to tell them to take some time for themselves on the weekend. So, you know, if you have a chance, say thank you to them. And again, I know everything doesn't go perfect, but we're trying. We're, we're making every effort we can. And I thank you for believing in us and giving us that opportunity. And again, like I said, our custodial staff, they're preparing, ready to bring kids in in a safe, clean environment. Our secretary's working hard, the cafeteria workers, 
our school counselors are, are, are just doing a tremendous job working with all of the needs of our students. So again, I want to thank all of you. Um, you know, Mr. Johnson said this, it, it is us together. Uh, and I think, you know, and I know and I believe in my heart that that we are ready to welcome students back on the 15th of of March. So we are looking forward to that. Just a couple of things that uh, I want to touch on before I get into some specifics. Hopefully everybody received a copy of this paper. And this is the bell schedule that starts for all students, both virtually and in person. And there is a change. Uh, this was sent out two weeks ago. So hopefully you received it. Uh, it is posted on our school website, but there are changes. Now that we are back in uh, school, we had to adapt the schedule because of lunches. And in order to do that, um, it's not the same time blocks for instruction and there's not an hour for lunch now. We're back to what would be a regular schedule. So please make sure you go back and look at this paper that you uh, were sent to you. And also, uh, if you need to, please check on your uh, the school website and it'll have all that information on there for you. Uh, the second thing is on the back of the paper and it has in here uh, for at home students and suggestions for parents. A lot of helpful hints for all of you uh, to continue to do well and move forward with your grades, uh, not only for third quarter, but in fourth quarter, whether you're in school or virtually. I'm here to tell you one thing. It's not too late. I know there are some students that are struggling. I, I know that. I understand that. But I'm here to tell you from the bottom of my heart, it's not too late. Third quarter will be over the 31st of March, but that still gives us quite a few days to work on our grades for third quarters. So parents, what I'm asking you to do, please review your students' grades. Check to make sure that they're logging on. Look at its learning. Check, send your emails to your teachers asking them if your students are missing anything. Talk with your school counselors. If we just open up more communicating with one another, I firmly believe that we're gonna do better grade-wise third quarter. There's still that opportunity to pass third quarter and you have a brand new start in fourth quarter, especially if you're gonna be entering the building, you get a little bit more with hands-on with teachers helping you. So again, please understand it is not too late to pass yet. If you have any questions and if you need anything, contact the school administrator, contact your teachers first. Don't be afraid to set up a call. Don't be afraid to set up a Teams and also talk with your school counselors. We're all here ready to help you. So please just remember, it's not too late to succeed. One of the things you're gonna notice if you're coming back to school, whether it's the 15th of March, which is again on cohorts. So you should have received a letter where everyone is assigned to a cohort, but only those students that replied back that are coming should show up on your cohort. There's a cohort one, two, three, and four, and that schedule again is on this piece of paper. So please make sure you check. If you notice the picture that's up on the screen, you'll see that there are plexiglass uh, dividers that are up on certain desks. If you notice, there's only certain chairs that are there because we're spread out at around six feet. We're gonna try as best that we can, but as we progress and more students come back in, it will not necessarily be the six feet, and that's where the plexiglass will come in to allow some more safety to keep things a little bit under control, we hope, with everything related to the virus. If you notice, you'll see a little bottle on there of hand sanitizer, and also throughout the room, there'll be hand wipes and wipes that you can wipe down the desk with, which students will be able to do. So we do have a lot of precautions uh, in place. But really what's important is as parents, please make sure this is the number one thing. And you can still hear me through it. I'm representing Bel Air right now with my Bel Air mask, but you have to have your mask on every single day. You must have a mask. It is not optional. If you have made that decision to come back to Bel Air High School or any Hartford County Public School, you have to have that mask on. So please make sure the only time that you'll be able to take that mask off is when you're in the cafeteria and you're seated. In the cafeteria, you'll see in the next slide that the tables are back, but if you notice, every seat has a plexiglass. So you will have some type of partition and dividing amongst you on your left and in your right and in front of you. While you're eating, you can have your mask off. 
when you get in line for lunch, when you take your trash up, when you enter the cafeteria or when you dismiss, you must have your mask on at all times. Again, I can't stress how important this is. The number one thing is to have your mask on to make sure that we do not expose one another. The other thing is to wash your hands. There are hand washing stations throughout the building, sinks and classrooms, hand sanitizers. Bring your own hand sanitizers, that's fine, but you really have to focus on that. So you can tell school's gonna be a little bit different physically as we go on. Also something that's gonna be different is when we go to class starting the 15th of March again, you're gonna be waking up a lot earlier. Uh, for those students that are coming in, buses will be uh, providing transportation uh, in your cohorts. And remember, they're only going to pick you up on your assigned day. So if you're in cohort one, you only come in cohort one. That will change and we'll get directives when we go to uh, four days a week. But for now, on the 15th of March, you only come in during that cohorted day. So please, again, and I keep putting back this, put this in a position where everybody can see every day and you know what cohort you are in. If you have a question about your cohort, please email Mr. Redman as he's the one taking care of all of the cohorts. One thing that's really important, please make sure that you sign in every day. You'll sign in in the building when you're here in person and we'll make you sign in on your phone, but you must sign in at home. And this also means on Fridays, students will start to slack parents because it, they consider it a, like a day off, but it's not. If you want to get your work assigned on Fridays, you have to sign in. So please make sure you're signing in on Fridays also because attendance does count for that. Instruction is going to be a little bit different for those students that are coming in. But I want you to understand the computer that you have that you're using now, we're still going to be using that in the classrooms. It's learning is still going to be the platform and model that we use for instruction throughout the rest of the school year. The reason that we're doing that is when you only have 25% of the students in the building and 75% home, and then when we bring more people in, we're still going to have students at home. We need some continuity for our teachers to be able to deliver instruction for everyone. And also, it's important for our teachers to have that when they're grading for consistency and that students know where to turn everything in. So the computer will still be what we're going to be using as the main source of instruction and the It's Learning platform will still be used throughout the rest of the year. While you're in school, obviously you're going to have a little bit more one on one interaction, but not all things are necessarily going to be the same. I can't stress this enough. We're still in COVID. We're still in a pandemic. Um, as I alluded to earlier, my son's in the middle of a, of a uh, quarantine right now and, and things like that may happen. But I have to ask you, you know, please understand um, it's not going to be that whole we're all back in and boom, everything's back to normal. We still have quite a few uh, things that we have to follow related to COVID protocol, cleaning, uh, what can and can't be used, what you're allowed to do in a weight room, what you're not allowed to do in a weight room. Um, so we're going to have a lot of things that are going to come up over the next couple of weeks that we'll inform you of. But just don't be surprised if your students come back and say it's really not that different right off the bat from what they're doing at home. Our teachers will get into their rhythm and their pace. But again, I just want to make you realize what we're doing. OK, um, so please make sure if you're coming back on the 15th of March, the most important thing is every day have your computer charged, bring your charging cord with you and have your mask. You, we, we have to have this mask. This is the number one fighter we're going to use in order to keep COVID out of Bel Air High School. So please make sure, again, computers charged, bring your charging cord with you, and a mask every day. Now, some of the other things too, as Mr. Redman already alluded to, we are coming back to school. School means we have regular rules and regulations. You need to be here on time. You have to be in class on time. You're not allowed to carry a book bag around. We still have to follow our school safety policies. So students will bring their book bags to school, but they go in their lockers. They will have their lockers assigned to them. 
Um, the whole idea about getting back into a regular routine is getting back into a regular routine. So not only do we have to worry about the COVID protocol, we have to worry about a dress code. Uh, I'm here to tell you too, parents, please stress to your students. I really need your help, okay? The hoodies, they cannot be up. No hats, no anything. It's going to be difficult enough to make sure we get who everybody is wearing the masks. We don't need those obstructions with someone putting their hood up or someone sticking it in their ear in their phone, earphone in because they can't hear us. We need you to help us make this school safe. So no hoodies up, no hats, no caps, no anything of that nature. CDC is telling us you're not allowed to bring blankets or anything of that nature. What you wear is what you bring into the room. Okay, everything else goes into your locker. We need to follow all these rules and expectations to make sure that we're safe and healthy. So please make sure you do that. And one of the things that I need to tell you about is going to be difficult is we're all going to be back together for the first time in a year. And, and for some, that's going to be difficult. And we have to remember what we're built on. We're built on Bobcat pride. We're built on respecting one another. We're built on understanding that everybody needs something to succeed. So we want all of us to come into this building with a great sense of renewed excitement. We want you to come back ready to learn, to see your friends at a safe distance, to make sure that you're doing what you need to do to succeed academically, and also to bring back some of the things that we all have missed. We all can't wait to hear the sounds of students in the hallways doing what we do best, and that's being together as a Bobcat family. But please make sure you understand, we need to respect everyone that walks in this building. We're all coming in at different times and places right now of our comfort level, about whether we wanna be here or not, how we're doing academically, how we're doing socially and mentally, let us help you. Your school counselors are here, your teachers are here, your administrators are here. So reach out to us, okay? But please, more than anything, I'm asking you to respect everyone's decision to be here, respect their space, respect everyone for who they are. And if you have any issues or concerns, parents or students, don't hesitate to reach out to one of us, please. Sports is a big question. Um, sports are taking place, but it's only the spring season. Please understand, it is only the spring season. Coaches have been in touch with their students, athletes. If there are any questions, you need to talk to Mr. Craig Reddish. He is our athletic director. Or speak to the coach if your students are already in the workouts. I came in and saw some of the students. It was a great sight to say hi to some of the students that were working out earlier and leaving and coming and going. So we're starting to ramp it up. So it's a great thing. So um, again, um, there'll be rules and regulations that are going to be coming down about attendance for parents. Um, you know, you have to respect that. You have to respect that we're still doing everything we can to mitigate the issue of COVID. We don't want an outbreak. So please understand that when all these rules come down, we're working and getting our directives from the Board of Education and the central office, but really it's for everyone's own good and protection. So please understand that. For students in general, obviously I talked about washing your hands and wearing your masks, respecting space. Please make sure you're keeping out of the, the clusters and you're gonna hear us in the hallways, parents. We're gonna be telling them, move it on, gotta move. No groups, no hanging out, because we can't have that cluster. Uh, our teachers know they're not eating in the lunch rooms together. They're separate. So um, please understand, we're not really riding your kids or being disrespectful, but we need to keep our social distance. We want this to be a success. We want the return to school to be an absolute success, and we need your help. So please make sure, keeping your distance, washing your hands, um, you know, wiping down the desk, the teachers will have the wipes, taking care of that. Cafeteria, masks on at all times, except when you're sitting and eating. With your help, we'll make it through the rest of this year and move forward to a better time next year. We just need your help. And parents, I'm in the same boat, Mr. Johnson, Ms. Quigley, we all said it, we have kids that are in some type of education system. Please don't send your kids to school sick. We can't have that chance or run that. In a way, I know some of you may disagree with me, 
But if child home sick, at least they can log on to a computer. And in the past, we didn't have to do that. So think of that as a positive. We have to take everything as a positive. So, so really think of that. Don't push your kids attendance if they're sick. We need to have your kids here healthy so nobody else gets sick. Same with our staff. They know the protocol, they need to sign in, but we really need you parents to make sure if your students have a fever, sore throat, any of the COVID signs, keep them home. Let them get healthy. Let them come back in when they're ready to go and to perform. And again, we have our laptops that they're still able to do their education, and that's what's important. Um, one of the things I want to kind of close with, and then we're going to open it up to a Q&A, is this. I've been telling my staff, and I'm going to tell the students, and I'm telling you as parents, I don't want to come back to Ballard High School like it was. I don't. I don't want to come back to a year ago. I want to come back to an exciting, challenging time for us and let us shine together. We've been working for that. I'll tell you right now, we are working to make this a great experience for your students. If they choose to stay at home and finish off virtually, we totally understand that and respect that. And we're here to take care of your students that way. If they want to come back in the cohorts, and then if they want to come back when it's four days a week, that's great also. Whatever way they do, we want to move forward. We want to move forward. We're not looking back to normal. We're looking to what's going to be better in the future. And I'm asking you to help us do that. So please, whatever you can do, help us in a positive manner. Back your students. Check their work. It's not too late for any student in Bel Air High School. Every student in Bel Air High School right now today at 7.28 p.m. has the ability to pass a class for this year. Get involved, get more involved and reach out. We're here for you. You have your school counselors, your administrators and the greatest group of teachers. It's my honor to be with them. So please give them that opportunity to succeed and work with your children. And I guarantee you, if you do that, it'll make a difference. Be positive, be respectful, be polite, and work together as a group. And if we can do that, I guarantee you it's going to be a great return for cohort one on the 15th of March. I'll close before we go into our questions with this. You will be receiving quite a few more connect calls from me. Please don't hang up. I know you're tired of hearing my voice. It's our only way we can. You also are getting your emails, but there's going to be a lot of things happening. I will tell you sometimes we have something decided and it changes by morning. So please keep listening to your alert now calls. Give us the opportunity to work with your children. Work with us even more than you ever have. And I know how hard you have been, but we're here for you. Let us know and we'll make a difference for your children, not only this year, not only the third quarter, but the fourth quarter, and as we move forward throughout the summer and to what we hope will be a great next year. But we're not gonna give up on this year because we're gonna do it together. At this time, I'm gonna allow Mr. Redmond to handle the Q&A. Some of the administrators will be answering questions and I'll try to answer as many as I can live. All right, we got an easy one for you, right? Right to kick it off. What is a student supposed to do if they forget their mask when they come to school? Good question. If they forget their mask, we will send them directly to the nurse's office uh, and the nurse will have a, um, a mask for them. It'll be one of the masks that look similar to uh, what you see, the medical ones, and they'll be disposable. Um, please try your best you can. I'll be honest with you. Um, you're going to have to have that mask to get onto the bus. So I don't know if the bus drivers will have any, but we'll have extras here. But please make sure you remember that mask to get on the bus. Can you talk about opportunities for freshmen to come and visit and or tour the building either before we open on the 15th or before we open again on the 7th for more students? Yes, we sent out an alert now call to all of the cohorts uh, this week, uh, this past Friday, which was the 5th. We had some students come in, uh, ninth graders, and we're going to do the same thing on the 12th. 
Those are for only students that replied that they were coming back on the March 15th week. So their cohort one, two, three, and four, they're gonna be coming in. They can do that again on Friday. The hours are from eight to 11 and then from 12 to three. No parents, unfortunately, are allowed because it's just the students coming in. We really have to work on the numbers that are in the building. They'll get their schedule, their locker, and they'll walk around, and there's adults here to help them go through. We will have another event, and we're going to plan that potentially on April the 6th, and it'll be for the other group of incoming ninth graders that have not yet been in the building. And that information will come out once we get more information out to you about the opening for four days. Uh, you mentioned lockers for freshmen. We've got a couple questions about lockers for uh, other grades. When will they get them and when will they be able to use them? If they come into cohort one, two, three, and four, the week of, April, uh, of March the 15th, uh, they will come in, they will go to their homeroom, and they will get their home, they will get their uh, lockers either in homeroom or period one uh, the first day that their cohort is here. And then the groups that come in for four days a week in uh, April, they will do the same thing. They will go to homeroom and they will get their lockers at that time and then take their books to the lockers and move on from there. There have been rumors that you have to sign up for the one day a week cohort to be eligible to come back to four days a week in April. Can you please clarify? Right there. There is not right now. Um, we have students that have signed up to be in cohort one. We needed those numbers to help us plan our lunch periods and how we were going to be spacing out the classrooms. If you still wish to come in one day a week, you need to get in touch with Mr. Redmond. I can't guarantee you that we will get everybody in the first week, but we will try to process everybody as, as quickly as we can. But no, um, that, that, like I said, that is a rumor. If you don't come or if you do come during the cohorts, you still are able to come in during the four days a week. I want to tell you this, though. We have not been told if we're going to do a survey yet or not. We're waiting on word from the Board of Education if we're going to resurvey students or not. As soon as we get that information, don't shut me off. I'll be on doing my alert now calls and I'll be giving you information as soon as I get it. Will students be able to bring water bottles to use throughout the day? They're allowed to bring a clear water bottle with them, a clear water bottle. The water fountains are off, but we have our filling stations that are in the cafeteria and one on each floor that they're going to be able to do that. And if they're in a class, there's nothing wrong with a student to simply do this. Take a drink and put their mask back on. It, it, it's, it's very, it's okay. So they're allowed to do that. Can't keep it off and, you know, got to take a drink. Put it back on, take a drink, but you're going to be in your area away from other people. So again, it goes back to the respecting people. You know, make sure you put that mask back on when you're done taking a drink and everything will be OK. Are students changing for weight training or PE classes? No, students will not be changing for any of the physical education um, classes at this time. That is a decision that was made through central office, and that is because it is a very difficult situation for us to monitor what would go on in the uh, locker rooms uh, with the amount of students. So at this time, uh, changes are taking place to what's going to happen in all PE classes and how that's going to take place. Again, you know, once the weather breaks, we'll be able to do different things, but the weight room itself, weight training is going to have very, very strict restrictions on what you can and can't do. And also, again, uh, any type of physical activities inside will be based on spacing and what will happen related to the rules and regulations of COVID. We've got a couple of questions related to music instruments. I don't know if you want to tackle that or if you want them to contact those teachers directly. At this point, I would contact your music teachers because they're getting their directives from the head of uh, Harford County Music Program. So I know that there has been talk about uh, we're still not going to be able to sing, but you're allowed to hum. 
Um, so that's part of the things that are changing. But I strongly encourage you to get in touch with your music teachers. They're actually being fed that information directly. What should students bring to school? Um, students should bring their laptops. They should bring their masks, always their masks. They should bring their uh, cord in case they may need to use it. We will have some uh, places to plug in and charge your computers if they start to run low, but that's what you need to do now. I would bring a notebook potentially, but I think what you're using in terms of your laptop is what you need now. Um, again, a great conversation is ask your teachers what they're going to be expecting you to use in the school when you're here. It may be a calculator if you're not using the one on your computer, but hopefully you can use that one. So uh, again, open that lines of communication and ask what the expectations are for each of your classroom teachers. And remember, you're going to be changing classes. We're back to normal. So we're going to be doing a homeroom and then change and go to period one and change. So you're going to be able to go to one period, get your locker, get your stuff, and you have ample time. There's eight minutes between class. Mr. Johnson, who has the longest legs in the world, walks this building in five minutes. He can do it in five, six minutes. You can do it in eight minutes. We've done it before. Does the parent agreement, the new parent agreement for COVID-19 need to be brought to school before the 15th or can my student bring it with them on the first day? Great question. You can bring it with them. You can bring it in and there's also an electronic copy too. So you could do either one. We're gonna be gathering all that data. Um, it's a great question and here's the thing. You get a one day reprieve if you forget it, but we can't let you in the next time your cohort comes in. So when your cohort won on Monday, hopefully everybody brings it. I'm going to do a reminder this week, but if you have that in, then you're good. If you don't, the next time you come in, we can't, we can't let you in the building. That's COVID protocol. And remember, please, everybody, you can only come to school on your assigned cohort starting April, or excuse me, starting March the 15th, only in your uh, only in your cohorts starting March 15th. Uh, purses are never really allowed. Purses are in your lockers. It is strictly, they're, they're considered, you know, I don't want to get into splitting hairs about things. I mean, if you have a purse, it's a purse. That's one thing, but I don't want a big bag that you can carry all kind of things in. Uh, please understand it's a safety issue. Uh, we still have to run a school. I, I know we don't want to think this way, but part of our responsibility is to make sure a school is safe, not only safe from COVID, but safe from other harms and potential. So again, that's why no bags are allowed to be brought around, and that's why they're put into the uh, into the lockers. A couple questions about lunch and breakfast. Uh, are they free? Yes, lunch and breakfast, great question, will remain free throughout the end of the school year for all students. And where can people find information about bus stops and bus schedules? I will be making an announcement about that, but it, it, to be honest with you, it's the bus schedule that you originally had. I know it's far back, going back in August and September, but that's the same place. Um, We'll, we'll try to look up that information uh, and see if I can get you the exact website and post that information on, post that information on our school website. Uh, Ms. Quickly is in charge of transportation, so we'll get her working on that first thing tomorrow. But if you had that information when you got your schedules and looked into it at the beginning of the year, then it'll be on your schedule then also. And remember, you'll get picked up for your cohort only starting March the 15th. Got a couple of questions about parking. I don't know if you want to take that or if you want me to. Oh, I'll take that too. Parking is only for seniors that are part-time attendants right now. Um, and the reason being is this, uh, with so many students that went part-time attendance, we don't have the, the parking space. We don't. I would just tell you that when students made their decision to go part-time, we will barely have enough spaces for all of our of our seniors. That'll be OK, depending on which ones come and go. But we cannot open parking up to anybody else at this time. Definitely no underclassmen. And at this time, no other seniors other than part time attendants 
simply because of the vast amount of numbers. One of the other things is we can monitor the numbers uh, during the cohorts, but I can't turn around in three weeks and then change something drastically like that and say, now you can't park. It's going to be part time uh, seniors only, and that, that's what we have to do for the remaining part of the year. If you have specifics about what you need, how much it costs and everything, that goes to Mr. Redman as he works with the seniors. Uh, do virtual students have to attend a homeroom? No, virtual students do not have to attend homeroom. Homeroom is going to be because we need that physical kind of people in the building, especially, God forbid, if something happens. If we would have a gas leak or we would have some type of event or a medical emergency for a student, if we have all, we need to know who's in our buildings. So our teachers are going to be checking who's in our buildings and then also taking attendance virtually. So we will, we will know you're going to be one place or another. You can't hide on us. So you're going to be one place or another. So just remember that, parents. They're going to be logging on at home if they're at home or in school if they're in school. Um, um, you know, I, I noticed the one where there'll be actual cook or prepare food and preparation classes. I'll be honest with you at this time now. Uh, the expectation uh, right now because of the COVID, uh, there will not be a, a large amount of preparation individually with students. Uh, I envision our uh, foods teachers to demonstrate for the group to provide information for students at home. But unfortunately, at this time, I do not see a large amount of uh, personal activity with us cooking, baking and everything in the foods class. Uh, just like in some of the science classes, I don't see a lot of interaction with doing your labs. There'll be a lot more of the teachers providing you information similar to what they've been doing. Uh, in person, you get to see it a little bit more. You may participate as part of the demonstrator, but individually, we're not going to be going right into the whole idea of uh, full school back. It, there's just so many safety protocols that we have to do with sterilization, cleaning, and COVID, uh, six foot distancing, masks on and off. We just can't have that at this particular time. You got ahead of me there. Uh, bathroom <laughs> breaks. Can you talk about how how often uh, bathrooms will be cleaned and when students can utilize them? The students will. If that will not change anything. Students will sign out of a room. They'll go to the bathroom. Uh, our custodial staff has their cleaning schedule that they do bathrooms. They are in and out throughout the day. Um, I can tell you that at the end of the day, this building, uh, and that's something we didn't mention. So please pay attention to this. At the end of the day, this building closes at two o'clock. All students will be getting picked up. Make sure your rides are at two o'clock or you're taking the bus home. But, you know, the bell rings at two o'clock. So from two to two twenty, there is no after school in person anything. There's no after school tutoring. There's no after school work sessions with teachers. There's no after school clubs. All of that is to remain virtual. Even the students here for athletics, they leave and then they come back at four o'clock. They're not allowed back in the building. They go right to their outside practices because we have we don't have a lot of time. Think about what we have to do. We have to clean this building, every classroom, our custodial staff, wiping down desks, wiping down the shields, taking care of the cafeteria, cleaning the bathrooms, disinfecting every handrail, every knob. That is their job. So when school is done, school is over for the rest of this year. We're not going to be able to have any personal interaction with students and staff or anyone after school. The expectation is we need to lock down so we can clean this facility and be ready to teach the next morning. And that's what we have to focus on. I know it's difficult. I'm with you. My son hasn't played lacrosse and they're in, in shutdown right now waiting in college to play lacrosse. He's in quarantine waiting to hopefully play lacrosse. I understand it. I understand as a former coach how bad we want our kids out there. But our job first and foremost is to open the building every day clean and ready for our students to get their education. That's our first and foremost goal. That is our focus. 
So it's not that we're doing it because we're mean. We would love to have all those activities, but they have to remain virtual and athletes have to remain outside the building. So there's no reason for student athletes to be bringing lacrosse sticks or anything with them to school because everybody's going home and then they're coming back at four o'clock when practice starts or game starts. So the locker rooms will not be open to store them. Teachers will not store equipment in their rooms because you were to leave the campus and then come back at four o'clock for practice. Can you talk to, uh, about how uh, students will know what lunch they have uh, starting in the new schedule? Um, sure, starting with the new schedule, what will happen is in period two, teachers both virtually and in person will read who's gonna go to first sket to first lunch. Students are used to having an hour for lunch. We're back to a regular schedule now. And again, please refer back to this schedule and it'll explain that to you. But we're back to the regular 25 minute lunches like we would have had if we were in a regular school day. So please make sure you go back and read that. But teachers will tell you what lunch you're going to prior to lunch period for the first two rotations on A days and B days. Uh, and we'll make announcements for those students that are here in the building and the teachers will make the announcements for those students that are virtual. That's pretty much the main questions. We've got some other side questions that we will be uh, providing some written answers to, but that's that's the majority of the big topics that we were planning on covering tonight. Well, what I'd like to do is, is thank you, Mr. Redman, and thank you for everybody that assisted us, Ms. Benfield and Mr. Kasuf the other assistant principals, Mr. Johnson and Ms. Quickly. I wanna leave you with this. We're all nervous, we are, but we're excited too. Um, and, and the questions that you need, email us. We'll answer the questions. Um, it, it's gonna be a challenge, it is. Uh, there's gonna be some changes. You're gonna see a lot of signs that say, stop here, wait. We need you to listen. We need you parents to keep your kids home if they don't feel well. We need students to understand that you're going to be going up one set of stairs only. You may think it's elementary, but it's for a purpose of flow. So we are going to have to change some things, but change isn't bad. OK, change can lead to great things. And I'm telling you, we can change together for the better. OK, I promise you we can. I'm going to say it again before I sign off. Every student right now in this school, at Bel Air High School, has the ability to pass third quarter and pass fourth quarter. It's now up to you to make that decision. Mom, dad, aunt, uncle, grandparents, guardian, whoever you are, tough love it up, okay? Get those phones away from them. Get on that computer with them. Get those meetings set up. Get that work turned in. Finish off strong third quarter and get ready for an, an amazing fourth quarter. We're going to succeed together. We really are. I know there's probably more questions, but please, we're going to answer the Q&A. If you need something, talk to your school counselors. One big thing for 9th, 10th, and 11th. I'm talking 9th, 10th, and 11th right now. If you haven't turned in your schedules, you need to do so for next year. If you don't, they're going to be made for you. So get those scheduling. Parents, if you don't know what we're talking about, they had it at an event with uh, the counselors. Uh, they met in an English class and we had an event like this talking about scheduling. So please talk to your kids. You know, almost eight o'clock, turn off the TV, have a cup of tea, hot, hot chocolate, whatever. Talk about where we're going and what's your plan for the rest of the year. Um, it's not too late. It's not too late. Okay. So with that, I'm at my time limit at 7.50. We're gonna work on the answers for all the rest of the Q&A so you can get the answers. If you have other specific questions, please reach out to us. Thank you, parents. Thank you for taking your time. Thank you for making this an important event. And please, if you need anything, let us know. This will be recorded and it will be on uh, our school website. So tell your friends, tell everybody to watch it and we need to work together. Take care, and I can't wait to have our Bobcat family back together again. Don't forget your masks. Have a great evening, everybody.